Hi everyone! So today we've got a really fun video. We're going to look at a brand new book that focuses on learning how to draw and it's by the wonderful Helen Elliston who created the Colourist Special Effects books and showed us how to create beautiful techniques and realism in our colouring. So she is now teaching us how to actually draw the illustrations to colour. Uh, not only that, but I will be doing a massive giveaway at the end of this video and I'll explain more about it obviously when the time comes but suffice to say you'll want to stick around and probably want to enter this giveaway because it is huge, it's full of high-end brands so I think you're going to love it. So anyway, the new book, this is called Sketch and Shade and Helen's going to show us all of the tips and tricks into creating a, a realistic piece of artwork to, to have as it is or to colour in using some of her techniques from the previous books. So Sketch and Shade is a bigger book than the others, it's quite thick, um, I'll put the number of pages up on the screen because I haven't got it to my mind at the moment, but it is thicker. I wouldn't say double the thickness, but it's not far off the uh, the Colourist Special Effects book, so you're getting an awful lot of bang for your book. And it is Amazon printed, it has a matte cover, nice soft touch, and then on the back you can see just some of the things that you'll be able to create inside. So let's have a proper look then. And I must say before I start the review that I have had express permission from the lovely Helen herself to show you all of these pages. So don't worry about things like um, pages being seen before they're bought and things like that because Helen is not worried. So we've got a welcome. Welcome to Sketch and Shade. I'll help you to learn how to draw with confidence using graphite pencils. I am a professional artist with over 30 years of experience. Um, drawing can be daunting but broken down into simple steps will be so much easier and more enjoyable. And um, then she's got a thank yous, which has a bit of a familiar name there. Um, and she's advising you to place a blank sheet of paper underneath your palm to reduce smudging. Because if you've never used graphite before, I mean, I'm sure you have, even thinking back to school when you were using pencils, you know that all you have to do is touch it and it's smudged. That's just the nature of the medium. So um, she says, inside the book are step-by-step -step guides for various images, both sketched and shaded. So she's not just teaching you how to draw the outline of something, she's teaching you how to sketch it and make it look a bit more um, three-dimensional and realistic. So first of all, we've got items and tips for drawing. So basically, if you've got a piece of paper and a pencil and an eraser, you're good to go. She's not saying that you need anything special or fancy or high-end or anything like that. Now, when we get to the giveaway at the end of this video, I have included a lot of fancy high-end stuff in the prize bundle, but that is purely as, you know, a prize to win and something to be excited about winning. If you've got a pencil, a piece of paper and an eraser, you don't need any of that stuff. So, what Helen recommends is obviously pencils so if you can grab some different softness of pencils keeping within the B range which is the softer pencils so from 2B to 10B that's great if you can only you know use a HB pencil that you found half chewed down the set E that's totally fine too you might just not be able to get the exact amount of depth um, that you could get with with darker and lighter pencils also q-tips for smudging now it doesn't have to be a q-tip could be cotton wool it could be a uh, paper blender like this one they call these blending stumps or tortillions and these are compressed pieces of paper so they're compressed and they are formed into a point and then you use i don't know i did have one somewhere you use a little sanding block to sand off any of the color so you can start again and it lasts for ages and ages so you can use that you can use q-tips Kneadable eraser is really quite important, but if you don't have one of those, but you have some access to some blue tack, some sticky tack, I don't know what you call it in America. Um, I've got some actually. This stuff here, so that stuff that you put posters up on your wall with, you can use that as a kneaded eraser because all it does is it picks up the, um, the, la the top layers of graphite off the paper and it makes it lighter so you can you can play around with it you can knead it into different shapes and things like that so it's, a, it's much better than normal erasers also Helen recommends a thin tipped eraser just like one of these which is a Tombow Mono you can get these on Amazon um, again you know it's not something that you absolutely have to get but it does help just etch out a few details uh, then we have cotton wool and 
or tissue paper. So anything you want to use to blend, whatever your preferred dry blending medium is, whether that be Q-tips, cotton wool, blending stumps or tissue paper, anything you've got to hand. You'll also obviously need some white paper to draw on and Helen always uses bog standard copy paper. So anything that you put in your printer that you get in big reams for really cheap at the supermarket is what Helen uses. So you do not need any special papers. Then there are a couple of symbols that will appear throughout the book. So this one here is a flip and trace symbol, which she explains here. Then there's the creating a shaded background page. So what that basically means is you get your pencil and with a loose hold, let me just do it on here, you would shade in, oh, why isn't this pencil working? <laughs> you would, this pencil's got some wax on it or something. One second, let me grab a pencil that actually works. Uh, okay, let's try this one. So to create the shaded background with a loose hold, you shade in all directions, that's better. So shade a little bit in that direction, a little bit in this direction, until you have a fairly smooth layer of graphite. And uh, that you would do that from edge to edge of the page if you were doing a big page drawing. And then you smudge it with a circular motion. Now, I don't even think I've got a clean blending stump. I'm so ridiculously unprepared, as always. But anyway, you blend it like that and uh, do it with a circular motion and that just softens it up. And also, you know, the pressure will sort of slightly burnish and, and smooth out any tooth in the paper. So that's that. Flip and trace. So that's when you see this symbol on the page. Flip and trace is how to create mirror symmetry. So what you would do is you would have your piece of paper and you would draw on the left side only. You then fold your paper in half and trace the image onto the reverse side. Unfold your paper and now you'll have half an image on the front of the page and half on a reverse. Then press your paper flat against a window so you don't need a light box or anything like that. If you've got a window, you can do it. Press it against the window and the sunlight streaming through um, will allow you to put another piece of paper on top and trace over the whole thing. So that's how you get a mirrored symmetrical image very, very easily just using your window. So here's where she shows you the different grades of graphite pencils. I was talking earlier about lighter and darker within the B range of pencils. So your 2B on your B is really quite light going straight down to your 8b your 10b which is super super dark and you don't need much pressure to put that dark kind of gradient on the page so i'll be talking about tones in this video and tone is basically the black and white word for color so say you were coloring someone's face you would want to use a, a darker color on the edge and the shadows then a medium a mid-tone color and then highlight color when you're using graphite, we call this the tone. So a darker tone would be around the edges of this scroll here, and then a mid-tone everywhere else, and then a highlight, you know, in certain spots just to make it pop from the page. So when we're looking at tones, this is what your pencils should look like, something like this. So you can see that what I've done is I've taken a 2H, a B, a 2B, 3B, 4B, 6B, 8B, and I've just put them down on the paper just to see how they do actually look. Because obviously in books, you know, they'll get printed and it'll be a bit lighter than it should be and it won't be exact. So I wanted to see on paper how it would look. And I then made a swatch of blend right from 2H to 8B all the way down and smoothed it out with a blending stump. So you can see that at the top with the 2H and the B, it's harder, lighter and sharper. And then at the bottom, it's softer, grainier and more smudgeable. So you'll be using different pencils depending on the technique and the tone that you're trying to achieve. So let me just put this away for a second and we'll get into the first tutorial. So this is how to draw a fluid curl and you can trace, flip and draw this again for a symmetrical image. It looks very ornamental and sort of like a, a beautiful uh, frame from olden times, you know, that, that filigree look. She then shows you how to shade it to make it look three dimensional. So you can see step by step, she tells you exactly where to put the shade in. She even tells you which grade of pencil to use. So this is a fun page for you to copy, sketch and play. So you draw a curve, then you add to it, see what you can create, just have fun with it. Draw a free flowing line sketch and just mess about with it. Let your hand just go wild and, and see what you come out with. 
Then we move on to ribbons, which you will have seen in my sketchbook. So I've had a good go at this ribbon here. I'm going to put it up on the screen for you now to have a look at, just at the process of it. But again, it was really, really easy. You start with drawing an S-shaped curl, and then she shows you here how to sort of put lines in to make it look as though it's 3D. Then after that, you smudge it, then you get your 4B pencil, which is a bit darker than your 2B, to give your shadowed areas. Then you use your eraser to whiten out the highlight or shine zones on the ribbon. Now, it does take practice. Um, it's not something that you're going to master immediately. None of these things are. But everything step by step. And if you're willing to be patient and put the effort in and, you know, just, just have a go and have fun with it, you will be really, really surprised by what you achieve. I definitely have been. So the one rule I think that I would remember while I'm working with this book is that you will have to lay down graphite and erase, lay down graphite and erase multiple times over, you know, each piece that you're doing. Because you'll find that, you know, maybe it looks a little bit too dark in some areas and you need to lighten that up by pressing. You need a eraser on it just a couple of times to lift that, that top bit of graphite. Um, your highlights might end up getting muddied, so you'll need to come back in with an eraser. But then it might be it might be too straight and erased, so you want to just put a little bit more smooth shading back in there with your blending stump or your Q-tip. So it really is just that process of backward and forward, but maybe I'm making it sound harder than it is. I don't mean to do that. It's just very time consuming. So the more you practice, the quicker you'll get. It's like with anything. Um, Johanna Basford's book, How to Draw Inky Wonderlands, you know, when you first drew a flower out of that, it probably looked like something dead on the side of the street mine did anyway <laughs> but the more you practice like Johanna the more she's practiced now it's muscle memory for her so that's just how it goes so that's the ribbon and if you keep practicing and advancing your confidence and your skills you can get all kinds of different shapes of ribbon and it will look more and more realistic every single time also you have to think about perspective and shadow so she tells you where to put your shadow underneath the ribbon to make it look like it's sat on a surface and it's popping up from the page. We've then got the ribbon banner which is very much along the same lines and that's this one that I've done here so you can see how it looks when it's sketched. Sometimes you might not want to blend it with your q-tip or cotton wool, sometimes you might want to keep the, uh, the sketched version and you know it can look just as good, it's up to you. I find and I think Helen agrees that the blending and smoothing it out just gives it that extra something. So that's that. And then of course we've got this scroll, which is the one that I've done here, but I kept it to um, a length of thick wide ribbon rather than turning it into a scroll with the frayed edges and the rips and things like that. Cause I really liked how smooth I managed to get this to look and I wanted it to sort of look like a, a shiny ribbon. So that's that one. And then we've got rolled paper, very, very similar if you're wanting to create parchment or maybe you've got a colouring page that has a scroll on it and you want to know where the lights and the darks and the shading go. This can really help. So it doesn't only help for learning how to draw things, it helps you in learning where highlights and shadows go on certain things. So like I've just said, you've got a colouring page that's got a scroll on it, you want to colour it in blue, green, brown, whatever, but you don't know where to put the shade in. This book's going to help. So then we've got the 3D Metal Owl, which is not one that I've done yet, but she's created an outline for you so that you can trace over it, put your paper over it, trace it, and then you can practice shading it. So if you look at the step-by-step, -step, every single line that she has drawn has been put in here. So, you know, you're never on your own with this. It's always step-by-step -step and everything's there for you to keep referencing back you know if you're trying to make it look like Helen's then you can just sit and look at it and make sure that you're on the right track so this is what it looks like when it's finished as you can see it's got that beautiful metallic sort of chrome shine to it and I should mention that a lot of these um, items that have been featured in the book are items found around Helen's home obviously we've all been in lockdown for the past year and a bit and Helen's been stuck in and creating this book for us all so a lot of things that you find in this book are from her house her toilet roll you know things like that so it's got that personal touch to it and it's it's very friendly and very relaxed and informal as Helen's books usually are so we've got a bird I'm not going to you know talk about every single one in detail because we'll never get this done we've got the glowing candle 
which she actually lit. This is the exact candle that she lit in her house in memory of her lovely best friend Sue that passed away. And then we have roses. So this is another one that I've had a go at. As you can see, here is my finished rose. And really, really, really pleased with that. It looks like it could be a tattoo. That's another thing. If you wanted to start creating your own tattoo flash artwork in your sketchbook, this would be a really good um, practice thing to help you do that. So there is the rose. And we've got another type of rose. So a couple of different options there. And there's a few different ideas you can either copy them or trace them to practice and then you know until you get comfortable in creating your own outlines we've got a daisy and this is where that tombow mono eraser comes into play because it's just erasing little highlights and it's crazy how much more dynamic it looks after you've done that it's like adding the white gel pen dots onto your coloring pages it just elevates it into something better we've got your delicate daffodil so plenty of flowers here and this is that shaded background that she was talking about so I don't know where is it I think it's it's here where she says to create that shaded background just as we did at the start and it just helps to again lift the main subject off the page when you're doing your outlines and your highlights these are curled leaves so you know often in colouring books you might find that you have different shaped leaves and they're curled in on one another and it's difficult to know where shadows and things are so again this will help and it also helps you creating the texture of the leaf as well to look quite realistic. More leaves here, different sizes, different shapes. Then we have one of Helen's bead charms that she's decided to take on. And it's absolutely stunning because it actually shows you how to colour very, very shiny sort of glass beads or pearlescent looking objects. So uh, let's get right to the end and you'll be able to see what I mean. So can you see just how shiny and deep that looks? It's got that 3D depth to it. So, you know, it doesn't, it doesn't have to be an angel bead charm that you draw. It could be anything that, you know, you want pearls on or stuff like that. We have the bunny charm as well, which again shows you how to create this beautiful deep 3d pearl effect so you go from this outline to this fantastic like i said it's not going to come just like that it takes practice but this book is really really good for helping you do that so knitted wool texture you start off with your outline she shows you how to begin with the simplest of shapes and exactly how to fill it in to create that woolly look We've then got a cosy cushion and again she's using her q-tip to blend you can see how different it looks when you first put your pencil on to how it looks when you smudge it with your tissue paper or whatever so it really really makes the difference that that softening up and smudging we've got a bar of soap with some bubbles on it and again shadow is really important for objects that are sitting on a surface and there's the rest of the bar of soap we've then got how to create french plait hair so she tells you exactly what shapes to put down on the page and then where to shade it. So it might just be that you want to sketch the outline and then colour it in with your pencils. You won't need the, the shading bit or you might want the shading bit as a reference of where to put things or you might want to create a completely graphite black and white drawing that is shaded and realistic like this. So then we've got a chain link fence. And this is how it turns out. The French chic chair from Helen's bedroom. There we go, so you can see you get this lovely rounded padded look. And there's the finished article. And we've got a little bit of encouragement in the middle of the book here from Helen saying that some images in the book are more complex than others. Start with the images that appeal to you the most. And that's what I did with the ribbons and the rose because, you know, I thought that looks fairly simple. I want to just ease myself into this process. It says being passionate about what you draw helps to give you motivation, a lift and an elated feeling of accomplishment. Don't forget to always place that blank sheet of paper underneath your palm and always keep in mind dark versus light. So that tones that we talked about earlier, harsh versus soft, texture versus smooth. And she advises you to smile, try, try again, enjoy, relax and have fun. There's nobody watching you. It's not a test. You know, you can mess it up a million times and then finally you'll get a really really good result you can be proud of so we've got a pizza sketch this is an ink sketch so she's not showing you how to shade this with graphite she's done this with an ink pen um, probably something a bit like this 
like a pigment liner or whatever. So this is a pizza, as you can see, got bits of pepperoni on it, drips of melted cheese, and this is how it looks. It's very rough. It's very um, like a quick sketch of something that you would see like a still life kind of thing. Then we've got a realistic banana. So you've got, again, the shape to copy or trace if you're not confident, you know, with quite drawing it, but she has put in a grid method for you so if you prefer to draw that way using a grid and doing each square bit by bit you've got that there for you already so this is the realistic banana with all the little black bits on it and exactly where to put your shading and stuff again i think of this as a perfect companion to those colorist special effects books because even though it is not in color and we're not talking about color pencils you've just got all of that shading advice there so we've got a bitten apple, which I believe is a bitten apple that Helen bit herself and put on the table and drew for us during lockdown. <laughs> uh, yeah, so there's that. And then a cotton reel. So getting all of that texture in of each individual thread of cotton, starting off again with the lightly shaded base and smoothing it out. Then we've got cookies. So you've got your ink sketch cookie, like the pizza, and you've got your shaded cookie. So I guess if you're wanting something a bit simpler, um, you would go for the ink pen sketch and if you're wanting something that's got a bit more depth and dimension and realism you'd go for your shaded one so as you can see it looks fantastic then we've got the hot dog sausage in the bun with the ketchup and or mustard as well it looks really glossy and shiny at the end there and again that gloss and that shine is created purely by erasing things so as long as you've got an eraser you'll be fine so we've got some baked beans Lots of very unusual things in this book, but you know, it's it's stuff that when it's done and it looks realistic, like this with the shine again, the erasing bits, you'll be like really amazed at what you've managed to do and you'll want to share it everywhere. That's how I feel anyway. Um, this is a pebble beach stack. So she's showing you first of all how to draw the stack of pebbles. And then you can see this is what they look like shaded in. Carrying on with the pebble beach stack, just getting it to look really realistic. Then we've got a silhouetted country scene. So you shade and smudge for your base. You then erase bits with your kneadable eraser for clouds and things like that. And using your darkest pencil or a black pen, you can create your silhouette at the bottom of the page. And she's even put that block silhouette there for you to copy. This is all about sunsets in graphite. You would think that wouldn't work, but as you can see, it does. Here's a silver bell. So again, how to draw them using the grid method. You've got the oval bell base and then the ball of the bell. And, you know, she tells you exactly where to put all the lines to make it look symmetrical. So you can either do that or you can do the original flip and trace method. All the shade in there on the bell. And then the ink pen version. If you wanted to do a scratchy rough kind of look. We've got a nail polish bottle, which actually looks, well, they all look incredible when they're done, but I was blown away by this. You start off with this simple outline and you end up with this. So I think that might be one of the more uh, complex ones. So you might want to work up to that or just have a million goes, like I say, until you get it looking something like. We've got a meringue swirl. Tissues in a box. Lots of things that would be hanging around the home during lockdown. <laughs> And then a crystal dispenser. So this one, again, it's beautiful. You get that beautiful look of glass. And again, with the shadow, it's sat on a surface, so it's going to cast a shadow. And that, again, makes it look more realistic. We've got a 3D yin yang sign and a pin cushion. I'm trying to go quite quick through this because I know I'm rambling on. A Buddha face mug. So, you know, you might have a Buddha colouring page that you want to figure out highlights and shading for. Keep, keep that in mind. So again, we've got a little bit of motivation from Helen here. She says, creating something 3D on a 2D flat page takes a lot of time and understanding. Anyone can achieve it to a certain level. So you might be only on this level at the moment, the beginner's level like me. Helen's right up here, but you know, it's gonna take time and patience to get there. I often tell people who are copying either mine or another image to squint their eyes. This allows you to view the light and dark areas better and another useful technique is to turn your picture upside down because it enables you to view the picture as shapes and shade rather than the object. So if you've ever seen that book, it's called Drawing on the Right Side of the Brain. I can't remember who it's by now. It might be Betty somebody. I've forgotten. Anyway, she advises that 
the brain, especially looking at a face, for example, when you're trying to draw a face, the brain will always try and draw what it thinks a nose should look like, what it thinks eyes look like, because we are conditioned to know what these, these elements of a face look like. So instead of looking at the picture that you're referencing, you're using, your brain is creating it basically. So if you turn that reference picture upside down, and you try and train your eyes not to think that it's looking at a face, just to think it's looking at a line going down there, which is the neck, but we're not thinking about necks. A line going down there, and then you've got a curved line here for the jaw. And you know, you're just looking at lines, and, and it's really hard to describe, and you know, I'm crap at describing things anyway, but turn your picture upside down, your reference picture, and try not to think about what it actually is. Just look at the lines and the shapes. So you've got that grid method as well that I just explained with the bell. Um, and she's saying, don't be disheartened if it doesn't turn out as well as you would like it to. Return to it in a few days with fresh eyes and renewed motivation. Use a lot of scrap paper to practice your pressure, pressing hard, pressing lightly, using the side of the pencil, using the tip of the pencil, um, and, you know, just practicing. So here we have a burnt matchstick, <clears throat> excuse me, which I had to go at. So you can see that we start off with our pencil background nice and smudged and blurred. Then we're drawing in the matchstick shape, very simple, and then erasing bits to look like smoke. Now, this is my first go at this, and I do want to have another go at it. But for a first go, I don't think it's too bad. It's just that I think my smoke looks a bit more like a flame than it does smoke. <laughs> so whereas Helen's looks like a match that you've just blown out, mine looks like one that's lit which, you know, isn't a bad thing. It's not exactly what I was trying to achieve, but it's still there, it's still quite good. And I think what it was, was I added a bit too much shading into the middle of the flicks. So really, it should be a lot lighter. It's just, I don't know, I thought it looked better that way and I took it upon myself to do it and why not? So the sketchbook that I'm using has a really rough tooth to it and you can tell when you look at my blended background because it's really supposed to be a lot smoother than that you can see all the texture and the grain when you're using copy paper um, you won't get that at all so really I probably should have done that but sketchbook I like to I like to keep all my drawings in one place so then we have some matchstick outlines again if you're not quite confident yet in drawing your outline we've got a log fire let's come to the end of that one so you can see it looks so dynamic it's almost like you could reach into it it's fantastic smoky spooky skull so really all this is is your blended background and then erasing lots of bits and of course you know when you get towards the end stages you start adding a bit more shadow here and there but it's all about adding taking away adding taking away this is the x-ray hand so you've got your shape of your your muscle structure there and she's showing you exactly what to erase and what to put down and here we've got a scary face that's pressed up against a window. So it almost looks like someone has come up against the window and just evaporated and left this print behind. Keeping within that same theme, we've got a cute ghost. So a little bit of a Casper showing you how to draw that. Well, really, you're not really drawing it as such as you are erasing. Then we've got a metal chain, which ends up looking like this. And you can see the difference of the erasing. So here's... A very flat looking metal chain there's not too much shine to it it doesn't look very dynamic and then the end one where you've just erased a few bits fantastic here's Helen's toilet roll that we mentioned earlier um, she says that the year 20 and 21 definitely needs a toilet roll image for nostalgia for the great um, toilet roll shortage of 2020 so here it is she's even included the um, this the metal toilet roll holder then we've got crystals, sparkly crystals and dangling crystals. Then we've got a suit and tie. So again, a really, really good one if you are wanting to colour a, a suit but not knowing where to put creases in the fabric and stuff like that. I feel like I'm going on and on and on and boring myself to death. <laughs> um, so this is how to do a thumbs up. And again, this is really going to help you with knowing where the shading and things go on hands. Normally when you look in books, it will show you how to draw a hand like this. Or like this or you know maybe like that this is showing you how to draw a curled fist so it's really going to help with that also you've got the nails as well she shows you how to add a little bit of glitter to your nails we've got a windswept hair lady so you can see she's using this grid method to create the lady's face 
and then once you've done that and you've shaded it all in we'll get on to the hair and it's very very simple very sharp pencils pressing hard and fading away as you do the stroke and we've got a lady with glasses one of helen's friends so if you're wanting to know sort of the difference that glasses make onto the face and the, sh the way to put the shade in and things like that this will help and how to make the glasses look shiny obviously um, then we've got a die cut butterfly so this goes from a very simple kind of messy looking outline into something that looks extremely 3d and metallic even though we are only using you know black and white i think it's really important to master black and white i've probably done it backwards i've probably mastered how to color things first but really you should go back to basics go back to black and white highlight shadows um, I do recommend, and I think Sarah Renee Clark recommends this as well, is that if you have, um, well, any image really, if you've got an image of a face that you want to reference, so say you've gone on Google, you've gone on Pixabay or whatever, and you've found an image of a face that you want to reference, when you're colouring it, it can be very difficult to know where to put your lights, darks and mid-tones. So what I would recommend you do is turn it to black and white. And it's the same with any object. Say you have a, um, a piece of metal. If you turn it to black and white, you will see so clearly where the darks go and the mid-tones go and the highlights go. It just makes it so much easier. So whenever you're colouring and you're using a reference photo, if you're finding it difficult to replicate those lights, darks and mediums, turn your reference photo to black and white. It should really help. So we've got wave crests. This looks like an ink sketch, I think. And then we've got some simpler wave shapes and examples of using a wave in an ink sketch. Then we've got different hearts. So this is a bleeding heart flower. We've got heart shaped sunglasses. We have got a heart shaped treble clef and lots more here. A box of chocolates, a charm and uh, even a heart shaped rose. That one's really nice. I never noticed that before. Some more hearts. And then 3D shapes. So this will really help for practicing your perspective because, you know, there are a lot of different shaped things in colouring pages and things that you might just want to learn how to do. <laughs> Rambling. Um, so, yeah, she's showing you how to do spherical objects, triangular objects and all different kinds of 3D-ish things. Stars. And we've got flowers. So you're adding your depth, you're varying your angles and that's it. That is the book. How thick and massive is this? You are getting so much um, and it's, it's just fantastic. So I really hope you've enjoyed looking at the book. Now let's move on to the giveaway. So Helen has very kindly donated an Amazon voucher to this giveaway and with that voucher I stayed up until after midnight picking items and carefully selecting tools that I thought would be fantastic for a prize bundle. So Helen has given me the voucher, I have spent the voucher on the giveaway bundle. And here's what I chose. So just before I show you that actually, the way the giveaway is gonna work is there will be one main prize bundle. One winner is gonna win the main bundle. Then we're gonna have two runners up and those runners up are gonna receive a smaller bundle and I will show you it all right now. So the first thing that I chose, I'm going to go for little things first so you get more surprised as we go on. The first thing that I chose is a pack of cotton wool. So whatever blending method you prefer, you're going to be able to try them all with this bundle is what I'm saying. So we've got a pack of cotton wool balls. Next up, let me just reach over and make sure that I don't break anything. Next up is a couple of Statler Mars plastic white erasers. These are really good because they have a nice crisp edge to them and they can erase large areas quite quickly. So a two pack of those, you'll need lots of erasers for this. Speaking of erasers, I've also included, let me bring this up, a Faber-Castell kneadable art eraser. So this is that kneadable eraser we spoke about. If you haven't got one of these, you use blue tack or something like that. But this is from Faber-Castell and you can just pull bits off and shape it and just push it to the paper and it will lift your pigment. So you'll get one of them. Uh, the next thing is some blending stumps. So I did mention with the cotton wool that you might have different ways you prefer to blend and you wanna try some new ways. So you're gonna have all of that as an option. You've got your blending stumps here of all different shapes and sizes. You've also got in here a pencil extender 
but if your pencil starts getting a bit too short you want to extend it you've got some more blending stumps smaller ones there and then these brown things that you can see are those little sandpaper boards that you sand off the edges of your tortillion with so you'll get that what's next also you'll get a two pack of tombow mono erasers so i did show you earlier mine just get this out actually i've got two and you'll get two as well one of each size so the one that helen uses is this very very fine tipped one let me just keep focusing so this is a fine tipped eraser and then you'll also get a flat rectangular eraser as well so you can do different kind of mark making and erasing with those so they're mine put yours to one side then I've also included a mechanical pencil so you might just want to use your normal bog standard pencil but I thought you know it's a mechanical pencil it's something that will last you a long long time you've got your refills with it there and it's by Rotring Germany who is a really good company good brand so you've got a really good mechanical pencil there to use again i've just put lots of things in for different preferences so you might prefer using mechanical pencils and if i only put normal pencils in then you'll be a bit good so next up i've included a pack of uni mitsubishi pens these are uni pin fine liners pigment ink in black and they're all in different sizes from very tiny 0.05 up to i think it's 0.1 so these are for doing your ink sketching like i showed you in helen's book or maybe when you finished your graphite sketch you'll want to go over it in ink and you can do that lots and lots of options i have included also a pack of pencils by derwent so these will give you all of the different tones that you need for helen's book it goes from 9b up to h so what do you get does it tell you exactly what you get i think it's every pencil from 9b to h there we go 9b 8b 7 6 5 4 3 2 b h b f and h so you're getting all of those different hardnesses of pencils to create a real dynamic look in your sketches so derwent pencils i've also included some cotton buds so again different ways to blend that you might prefer blending stumps cotton wool cotton buds it's all there I've also included this fantastic M&R brass heavyweight sharpener. This is one of the best sharpeners ever. It's uh, made in Germany. And as you can see, it comes in this beautiful little gift packaging. And it's just a really, really, really good sharpener. It costs quite a lot of money. So, yeah. Um, then included a sketchbook that is exactly the same as the one I use. But again, if you've only got paper to draw on, that's absolutely fine. I just wanted this to be a really extra special luxury prize bundle. So you've got a Derwent sketchbook. Just realised that comes with all of the tortillions. So you've got a little case to put them in as well. I'm also including a pack of 12 Faber-Castell Polychromos pencils because you might want to add a little bit of colour in here and there. The black pencil might be really useful to you to get some really deep, dark black areas of your graphite drawing. So yeah, Polychromos, brilliant pencils. And I think this is the final thing. I'm just checking on my desk. I've got a whole pile of things. The final thing is a cardboard box no i'm just kidding it is a light board so you know earlier how i said you can trace things against your window using the sunlight well another really good option is using a light pad or a light board and that is what this is so it's usb powered you plug it in and it creates a, a flat a4 surface i don't know whether it's worth me getting it out of all the packaging but it creates it creates a block of light that you can put your paper over and it will you know show you underneath your image to trace so that is oh no it isn't i've got one more thing one more massive thing that i've forgotten to put in the prize bundle which is of course a copy of the book <laughs> so that's everything that the main prize winner is going to receive i'm just doing a double triple check that there's nothing else um so that's what you're going to receive if you win it is a worldwide giveaway so I'm going to be sending this wherever you are in the world. It's going to be a random giveaway. I'm just going to choose somebody. Um, there's nothing special that you have to do um, apart from comment under this video, but I'll tell you all about that in a sec. So that is the main prize bundle. I'm going to put this all to one side and then get the runner-up bundles. So much stuff. 
Right, let's just... Yeah, your erasers just fell on the floor, so good job it's rubber. Bounce back. <laughs> right, I'll just put this to one side. Okay, so two runners up. So two of you are going to receive this prize bundle as your runners up prize. You will each receive a copy of the book. You will also each receive a pack of Derwent pencils. You will also each receive a Faber Castell needed eraser. So you've got pretty much everything you need. As I said at the start, if you've got paper and you've got um, pencils and you've got a rubber, you're done. Um, so yeah, I'm really, really, really excited about this. Like I said, I stayed up till midnight choosing all of the prizes and, you know, putting things in the basket and deciding, no, there's something better than that or different that I can put in. So massive, massive thank you to Helen, obviously, for donating that Amazon voucher and giving me free reign to create this giveaway package for you all. So as usual, all of the links will be in the description to buy this book. If you cannot wait and you would prefer to just get your hands on a copy right now instead of seeing if you win the prize, you can have a look in the description and get your Amazon link there for the book. Just thinking if there's anything else. Of course, I need to tell you how to enter the giveaway. Might help. So all I want you to do is comment underneath this video. I don't really mind what you comment as long as you put on there somewhere that you want to be entered into the giveaway because there will be a lot of people that might already have the book or you know they're just not particularly bothered but they want to leave me a nice comment which is lovely. So just let me know in the comments what you think about the book, um, what you would like to draw first if you have been taken by any of the specific images, what you think of the book overall. As long as you tell me in the comment that you do want to also be entered into the giveaway, then you will be entered and a winner will be chosen at random seven days from now. So I'm just looking at my calendar. Today we are on May the 4th be with you. So I'm looking at May 11th, a week today, next Tuesday, I'll be choosing both the main prize winner and the two runner-up prizes. Again, worldwide, um, I think that's it. Any other questions, just ask me in the comments because I'm sure I've forgotten something. But yeah, thank you so much for watching this super long extra rambly review and I'll see you soon on Colour with Claire.